I've met me a lot. I mean, I've seen myself for 70 years every day, looked in the mirror and wondered why I look the way I look. Um, so I'm completely familiar with myself, but I don't really know what I look like. I certainly don't know what I look like to other people. And therefore I have to package myself in a way that reveals who I am. So there's a certain packaging of human beings that takes place in order to reveal ourselves authentically or in order to pretend to be something other than what we are. For me, school was an introduction into color. And I think that I was probably more visually attuned or visually curious than most of the people who were around me. But I was always very, very conscious of this. Today, designers get shoved into silos. And so somebody will say, I'm a graphic designer. Somebody else will say, I'm a product designer. Somebody else will say, they're an architect. And it's much less likely that someone will have a holistic ed education in the way that I was very fortunate. And I had that. I'm a very, very highly tuned appreciator. Partly because if I'm talking to people about what things look like, I better understand how to look at things. I better have muscles of seeing that make me able to see more than some of my colleagues can see. I have three muscles without which I couldn't do my work. The first, it's curiosity, really. You could call it inquisitiveness. You could call it questioning. But it's a muscle, and it's a muscle that enables me to ask, why is this like that? Why is this written in this way? Why is this so big? Why is it so small? Why, why is it the way it is? To be honest, I value knowing very little about almost everything because then um, I come to it with a, 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 a childlike freshness, hopefully. So for me, it never stops. It never stops. The second muscle, I call it the muscle of appreciation, which is just, it's not questioning more so much as noticing. How joyful things can be, how colorful things can be. What already exists is an inspiration. What you see walking down the street are how people choose to express themselves. You see why somebody painted something in that color. Lovely noise of a diesel you got there. Is that a Nissan you engine? Yes. It's no noise like it. In Wolf Erlins, which I led, we had to help our clients to find their self-expression, not impose our view of what was good design. A brand is really a way of remembering what something is like for future reference, something you value, something you feel attracted to. The job of a brand identity, of, a, of how you package that, all of that, the purpose, the vision, what it does, what it brings, how you make that so that people can take it and receive it and value it and treasure it and choose it, that's the whole process of branding. That's what it is. It's that famous story, remember there's two supermarkets, you go into one, they've run out of a certain product, and you think, what a crap store. You go into another one that you really admire, they've run out of products, you think, I should have been there earlier. My first job was designing a magazine called The Muck Spreader and Shifter, which is read by farmers. It already existed, but it, it, it didn't have any feeling of muck or spreading to it. So I picked a really fat typeface called Cooper Black, which looks like cow dung almost. It's got a real wet. It carries color beautifully. And from then on, I thought, oh yeah, I'm, I've understood something here. I've understood that there is emotion. And it's probably the most important component in graphic design, that you move people, that you don't just persuade or make people think you move them. For me, the muscle of curiosity and the muscle of appreciation enables the muscle of imagination. What I really enjoy is knowing that certain things have certain textures and certain tastes and to assemble them in a way that I've never done before because you never cook the same meal twice. I'll be using color, I will be using texture, I will be using the sequence of things. Everybody knows that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. 
it's a dinner. What few people realize, it is only through the parts that the whole gets delivered. I see seeing as a muscular exercise, like I see curiosity. It's a kind of being open, really. If you walk around with a head full of preoccupation, you're not going to notice anything in your visual life. I am obsessively interested in everything, and that gets expressed more through my eyes than through my ears.